Hi everybody, it's Allison and I am back with another party party. So today we are going to make a mini macrame plant hanger. If you've never done macrame before, it is literally making things out of knots. It's super fun. Uh, I promise it's not a fuddy-duddy thing, <laughs> no matter how much it may seem so, uh, if you lived through the 70s or shortly thereafter. Um, but uh, we are actually going to use a teeny tiny little pot today. This one's only about an inch and a half high. And this is the overhand net pattern that uh, I actually sized down for this itty bitty little pot. It's so tiny, so very tiny. Um, now you can do this for any size pot with any size string, but you're gonna have to do a little math and a little experimentation. For this size pot, you're gonna wanna have eight pieces of string that are 48 inches long. I cut them to 36 inches long, but I might get a little close to the ends. It turns out, depending on how thick your string is and how uh, how tightly you tie your knots, you might want to have a little extra. So I strongly recommend <laughs> the 48 inch pieces. Uh, you're also going to want to have some scissors and a ruler handy. You don't really need a very big ruler. A uh, six inch ruler will do. I've got one of my paper rulers that I use while I'm knitting. And you might want to have a little tape. Um, so you can tape what you're working on to a table or a book or a clipboard while you're working. Um, so the first thing you're going to do if you're working from scratch is you are going to cut your eight pieces of string. I've already got mine ready. If you are working from one of our little kits, you also have your string ready. And you are going to take your pieces of string and you're going to line up the ends pretty close. Mine are a little off here. I've got a little outlier. You're going to line up the ends pretty close and kind of straighten this out and find the middle. So you can fold them in half all together. Doesn't have to be particularly tidy. You just want to fold them in half. So once you've got these guys folded in half, the ends are all about in the same spot in your other hand. You're gonna to wanna to loop it over your finger and we're gonna do an overhand loop. So all of the knots in this particular project are an overhand knot. Basically it's the same knot you use to tie your shoes, <laughs> but we're only gonna do it once over and over. Uh, but with an overhand loop, you leave a little chunk at the top so that you can hang up your little planter when we're done. So you're gonna take your tail, you've got your little loop, you're gonna take your tail and you're going to go up. This is the overhand part of it. You're going to go up and then you're going to take this and go behind it. So see, it is just your standard knot now that we've pulled it through, but we want to leave this part up at the top open. We don't want to pull it too tight and we don't want to pull it too long either. So an easy way to do this is to put your finger in it and kind of snug the knot up to there. If you want, you can even take a couple of strings at a time and kind of pull them sideways just to make sure you've got that knot really, really tight. All right, so that's step one. We've got our hanging knot. Now what you want to do, you've got 16 little knots hanging down now. You want to take groups of four pieces that are next to each other and you want to separate those out. So you one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I feel like I should be singing Beethoven's ninth right about now. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So with each of these, so now we're, we've got kind of a, a quadrupus going on, <laughs> half an octopus. So with each of these groups of strings, you're going to want to do another overhand knot. No loop this time, just the overhand knot. So you just flip it up this way, tuck this part under. And the reason you go up and then through and down is that way all of your dangly parts end up pointed 
towards the ground instead of facing this way because if you go under and up then it like wants to flip over and it's really annoying. Now we want to get these knots as close as we can to the first big knot that you did. You can stick your finger in there to help you pull it tight or you can use your scissors like this the handle of your scissors or if you've got a pencil handy stick that in there. That helps you pull it nice and tight. So see, we've got that one snugged right up under there. And we're gonna do that with each group. So that's group A. We've got group B. Da, 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 da. Whoop. I've got one string. Sometimes you have to pull on each string to tighten up the knot because sometimes you have one that has escaped a little bit. Don't want that. Oh, you, you should have been, oh, okay, well, we'll push you over there. As long as you mostly have four adjacent strings, everything should work out pretty nicely. Right, we're gonna do, I'm gonna move my tape over so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm trying to keep it so you can see, but at this stage, there's just a lot of floppy strings. So, my third group. This is, this is not C and I did not pull it the knot tight enough. <laughs> so if you do feel like you have a really loose knot, just kind of grab it with your fingernails or if you need to <laughs> go get some needle nose pliers. Kind of pull it loose a little bit and then you can tighten that back up. There we go. And here is knot B. So this is row one in the written directions, which you can find on our website. And we're going to move on to row two in just a second. All right, so this is not D. Ah! Sometimes it doesn't want to tighten. Like I said, sometimes you got to take each string and pull a little bit to get it really tight. And you don't have to do them really tight. I just really like to. It gives me as much string as possible to work with and I know it's not gonna come undone. All right, so we've got knot A, knot B, knot C, and knot D is kind of back here in the back being weird, uh, all with their little tails hanging down. And that is row one. So now the fun begins. I want you to take two strings from knot A and just flip the other ones to the side. You don't need those. And I want you to take two strings from knot B. Like I said, just flip the other ones to the side. You don't need those. But you're going to move down, let's see, about three inches, I think. I have to check my notes. <laughs> So we're gonna move down 30 inches. One, two, three. Make sure, and it doesn't have to be exact on your measurement, as long as all your knots end in a row end up pretty much in the same place. So I'm going to actually only measure them once, and then all of my other uh, row two knots are gonna be worked off of. Oh, I grabbed the wrong group. There we go. All of my other row two knots are going to be pulled off of, I'll measure them against this knot. So let me check again. Okay, so this is where about three inches it is. I'm gonna do a little flip over and through. Do, 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 do should be right about here. We're going to double check. Yep, there we go. Again, you might want to pull on 
each string just to tighten it up a little bit. Oh, that one was really loose. There we go. So there, so this is gonna be not E and it's gonna start row number two. So move this over and this is where your tape comes in. Now we've got strings everywhere. We gotta pull two from each section. So it's actually really helpful at this point to go ahead and just take a piece of tape. I'm using a piece of artist tape. You can use just regular office tape. Go ahead and tape your hanging knot to your work surface. That way you can kind of kind of pull on it a little bit and all as well. Okay, so this is not E and we used not A, part of not A and part of not B to make not E. So now I want to use the other two strings from not B and two two strings from not C. So I'll just grab two of those and two of those. I'll make another knot. And we're going to make sure that it hangs down about the same amount as not E. So if you got to scooch it up and down a little bit, that is okay. You just want to make sure that when it's hanging, it's going to be in about the right place. All right, snug that up. This is not F. Those are about even. Excellent. All right. So now you're going to flip your, flip your stuff to the right a little bit. Got E and F over here. All right. So we've got the two leftovers from not C. And we want to get two of them from not D. We're going to do it again. Ooh. Sorry, my papers. The black paper that I use to increase my contrast while recording is sliding all over the place. Let me give that a piece of tape. I got a new desk since the last time I recorded for you all, and I am still figuring out what works best for it. There we go, nice and sturdy. Okay, so, whoops, I didn't flip that all the way through. Here we go. So now, once again, we want to make sure that when this is hanging, this knot lines up with this knot, or at least pretty close. It's okay if they're a little off, but it's a lot more fun if they do match up. Your pot will hang a little straighter. All right, so this is not G. Now, you should be all the way back. You may have to rotate a little more. You should be all the way back around to the beginning. So, I'm gonna flip it this way, actually. So this is the two leftover strands from knot D and the two leftover strands from knot A. When we started this row, so we are gonna join those together and make knot H. And now we are done with row two. So this shows you the basic thing we're gonna be doing for this entire project. We're just gonna, next row, we're gonna split the group again, and then again, and then we'll be done. So, this time though, we're only gonna move down an inch. So we've gone from here to here, and now we're just gonna go down just a little bit. So, and I think I, let me double check my notes here. I think I switched to a little later in the alphabet. Yes, I switched to not M for this next one. So you wanna take two pieces from the knot we just made, not H, and you wanna take, oh, no, sorry, not the one we just made. You wanna take two from not E, and two from not F. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in as long as you're taking two from one and two from the one right next to it. It doesn't really matter where you go. So we've got two from this one, two from this one. We'll call this one E and F. And we're gonna move down about an inch. 
just like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. You just kind of want to make sure it's close so that your uh, pot hangs in there really nice and uh, as long as they're all even, it'll look pretty good. Pull these through. No, don't pull that one through. Sometimes the string wants to come through twice. It's like, what are you doing? There we go. Now you can use any kind of string for this. You can use jute, you can use, um, I do recommend not slippery. I am using a cotton, um, a cotton cord uh, because the cotton cords are nice and grippy. Once you tie the knot, it doesn't want to let go. And actually, if you hang this up outside, <laughs> once it gets wet, it really doesn't want to let go. Uh, jute is much the same way because it's also a natural fiber. You can use any fiber you want, but the more slippery the cord is, the, the less likely it is to stay put, and the more frustrated you're likely to be. So uh, in, in the interest of your own sanity, I recommend something that uh, feels soft and grippy. So now we've got a new knot here, and we're going to call this one knot M. So I'm going to roll this over a little bit. Take two from the next one over. Make sure that you don't get mixed up. Like, I could easily reach back here and grab from this knot. It's not the knot I want to pick from. <laughs> if you do that, you end up with very weird stuff. So make sure that it is the knot next door that you were pulling from. So if this is E and F, I want to pull from G next. And we're going to take two from G and the leftovers from F. And we are, now see these didn't end up quite even. Uh, roll that up a little. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. But you can kind of adjust things as you go if you want to. Alright, get this through. We're going to make sure these end up round about the same spot. One of these is really loose. Ah, there we go. Like I said, sometimes you have to go through and pull each one individually. All right, so this is going to be knot N. Knot N still has a loose string here somewhere. There we go. So there's knot N. And we're going to take the remainder from over here on G and take two from H. Again, make sure you are picking the next one over, not the one across the way. They do get confused sometimes. We're going to make another knot. This is going to be O. Let all these not jokes go by without pointing out that one of them is not E. <laughs> Gotta do that tighten each one thing again because it doesn't want to do. There we go. One of these is still really loose. There it is. Haha. <laughs> So this is gonna be O. Now we're back at the beginning again. We have two left over from H and we have two left over from E. So we're gonna kind of flip everybody this way. Double check that we can, this is making a circle in fact. You can kind of see I'm going around the circle uh, just to make sure we didn't tie the wrong one to the wrong one. And we are gonna join these two up and that will be the end of row three. So we're going to do exactly the same thing for row four, just a little, just an inch down to make a little more net. Just get that nice and tight. All right. So this is not P. So you're going to take again, <laughs> the same as last time. So take two from knot M and two from knot N. We're gonna make a knot. Uh, 
Now you can see I'm getting kind of close to the end of mine. This is why I told you to cut a longer set of strings. <laughs> I just had already cut them and I didn't want to waste the rope. So get that about an inch below the previous group and get that knot nice and tight. There we go. All right, so. Got that knot. We're gonna take two from knot N, the leftovers, and we're gonna take two from the next one over, knot O. Again, make sure you didn't reach through the group to the back. <laughs> that does not go well. It really doesn't. Trust me. I, uh, I did it on one of my examples. It was very entertaining. I was like, oh, did I do that? Whoopsies. Well, that's a thing to tell people to watch out for. Right, so I'm gonna get this one and try and get it about even with this one. Give all of these a good, good tug to snug them up. And go to the next one. I believe we're making Q, R, S, and T at this point, if you are following along with the step-by-step -step directions. At this point, I just kind of zone out and I'm like, I'm making knots, they're so nice. Okay, here is that one. And again, we're back at the beginning. So you're gonna take the two leftovers from each side. Now it's really looking like a net. Two leftovers from each side, and you're gonna make a last knot. Ooh, I made that one really short. There we go. Trying to give my pot enough room to be. I'll tie this last. Last knot on row four. So that's row four. Now we've got a join at the bottom to make a place for, you can see we've got row one, row two, row three. Oh no, sorry, row one, row two, row three, row four. But now we have to make a bottom part for the uh, pot to sit down in. So I'm gonna scooch this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna do the same thing that we've been doing, but directly under row four to make row five. So take two from one knot and two from another. And we're gonna make another overhand knot. My strings are getting very short. Definitely use four foot strings. But I can do it, I know I can. All right. All right. Do, 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 do. Ooh, somebody is really loose. What on earth? Sorry, folks, like I said, I messed that one up. So if you need to undo a knot, just kind of pull it back out. All right, guess I should get down here to do this and scoop the knot up. And then I can show you how to scoop knots. All my ends through. One, two, three, four. There we go. Mine is starting to fray a little bit. That's a thing that happens, and that's okay. It'll look real cute in a minute. Just have to get through the tying part. All right, so I'm gonna scooch these up. If you have something pointy like 
pencil or your scissors, you can kind of stick it in the knot, or you can just grab the sections of your knot and pull them to either side, and it should help you get your knot nice and snug up against the bottom of your previous knot. So you've got a nice, nice little spot there. All right, so we're gonna do this with the leftovers from this knot above us and move to the next one. Join these up. Oh, these are much longer. Ha, ah, much easier. Now there's always one that ends up a lot longer and we're actually gonna make good use of that string, whichever one it's going to be. All right. these up. Scooch, 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 scooch. Give it a good... Mm, see, that is not as high as it could be. Again, it doesn't really matter. I am just being very particular. Again, if you don't have longer fingernails, if you do have some needle nose pliers, they can help you get your knot back undone if you need to. And you don't usually have to pull the knot all the way out, just loosen it up a little bit. All right. Tighten that one up. There we go. So we've got two. You can see we've got two parts of row five. We've got a nice little bottom forming on our net now. So you're gonna take the two leftovers from the one you were just working with, and you're gonna take two from the next one over in row four, and make another knot in row five. this up as close as you can to row four and get it nice and tight. And good news, I have a package coming soon to improve my video setup. So hopefully next time you will have a much higher resolution thing to look at. Now you should have only two leftovers from row four. I'm gonna do that last knot for row five. Ooh, I was trying not to be a knot. Check that out. <laughs> close as we can. Get that nice snug. All right, so now we have a nice little net. We've got five rows of knots, one up here, two is here, three, four, and then five kind of gathers everything together. Now to make a tassel at the bottom, I want you to find the one that's the longest. There's always one that's longer than all of the others. I have no idea how this works, but it does. Even if they're all perfectly even to start with, one of them ends up super long. So you're gonna take that one. Um, and if you want to, you can find another one that's really long and we'll do it below that one. Particularly if he's gotten some scraggly bits like I have. <laughs> um, I got a little scraggly this time, but that's okay. We'll, we'll just hold that one because I probably will need to use it. All right, where's my really, really long one? Here's my really, really long one. Okay, so you're going to take your really, really long, or relatively very long piece, and you're gonna go around a couple of times, and then you're gonna take the end, and you're going to, you have to do this very loosely so that you can get the end under the parts where you went around. So you want to go up through the top and down through the parts you just did. And then you want to pull it really tight 
tight as you can right up under row five. It might stick out a little funny, but that's okay because you can take the end, kind of split your tassel apart, take that loose end and kind of just pull it into the middle and it'll just blend in. Now, if you have another one that's really long and you want to band a little further down your tassel just to make it behave a little better, you can totally grab another long one and do that again. I'm gonna wrap a couple of times loosely so you can still get your finger under it. Now when you have longer pieces of string, this is much easier to do. That's why I recommend the 48 inches. Just tuck this under. I'm gonna pull this one tight as well. Now if you have longer string, you can wrap it like five or six times and then you don't have to do it twice. It will just be a nice tidy tassel. Nice, tidy tassel. All right, so I got that through. Can pull that snug. And got that scraggly little tail. We're gonna kind of tuck in the middle. And I've got a little tassel. Now my tassel's kind of funny looking. Uh, the ends are like, a bunch of them are all the same. And then we got some really long ones and some really short ones. So this is where you grab your scissors and you just kind of cut them all to very slightly different lengths. You might want to leave some longer ones in the middle and make sure you have some slightly shorter ones towards the outside because um, that'll just look a little more tassel-ish uh, to your brain. And just kind of keep snipping until you flap it around a little bit, see what it looks like because they're always going to move, uh, the strings are always going to move around a little. This one's being extra picky. So we are gonna, gonna clip these. Just until you get some nice layers going. And if you want to, you can unravel some of your pieces. It's gonna unravel over time, so you might as well. Um, Depending on your string, you might be able to just grab it with your fingernails and pull a little bit and it come out, or you can kind of just flap it around, give it a good rub. Like I said, sometimes you can take your thumbnail and go like this and it'll pop out. It just really depends on what string you've been using. I have this really long one that just keeps looking funny. There we go. It's a little better. I think my, this particular tassel looks really cute from one side and funny from the other side. So kind of spin it around, make sure it looks good from all the sides. You can always trim it some more later if you want to. So now you're done. You have a cute little mini macrame planter. All you have to do is tuck your little pot into this pocket and hang it up somewhere fun. Now you can put a live plant in yours or I have put a tiny fake plant in mine because I have a brown thumb and everything dies. <laughs> so you can join me to have some eternal greenery in your living space and uh, for it to just make everything joyful without needing water. Or you can put a light one in there. Um, succulents do really well in there and other small plants. But so this is your overhand net pattern. I hope you have a really good time. Please show me your tiny macrame planters. I want to see them. You can hit us up at MarietaCobbArtMuseum.org and find all of our contact info and social media there. And I look forward to seeing your pictures. Thank you so much.